Monuments are our history, our heritage, the fabric that unites the past with the present and the future. A reference to the thoughts, ideas, way of life and accomplishments of people who lived before us, enjoyed the same light as we did, spoke the same language, were inspired by the same landscape. Our monuments, an international asset and a precious treasure of memory, reflect the most gracious aspect of Greece and its culture, maintaining it unchangeable over the centuries. From 1997 to 2014, the Ministry of Culture and Sports created the conditions for the sustentation of Greek cultural heritage. Systematically and effectively, it utilized all available European funds, initially of the second and third community support frameworks, and nowadays of the National Strategic Reference Framework 2007 to 2013, in order to complete a series of programs related to the preservation, conservation, and promotion of monuments, archaeological sites, and cultural venues all over Greece. On the Acropolis, the most emblematic monument of Greece, eternal symbol of democracy, philosophy, reason and art, restoration works are in progress since 1975. Work began with the aim to preserve monuments, pass them on to the following generations and improve their understanding by millions of visitors who access the city to admire them. Over the last 15 years, rescue interventions were carried out to support areas of the monuments presenting serious structural problems. Continuous conservation and restoration work included the incorporation of scattered ancient material that is gradually tracked down. This was made possible thanks to funding from the second and third community support framework and nowadays from the National Strategic Reference Framework. Work at the Temple of Athena Niki was funded by the National Strategic Reference Framework, while the Pronaos, western and northern side of the Parthenon, were also conserved. Extensive conservation and cleaning was carried out in the Propylaea. Reconstruction and restoration work currently underway enhances knowledge and makes this major project known to a broader audience bringing citizens of the world in contact with the unique monuments. The Catholic Cathedral of St. Dionysius, a typical example of neoclassicism, is one of the most interesting buildings of the 19th century in the centre of Athens. The church was heavily damaged by the 1999 earthquake. Thanks to funding from the National Strategic Reference Framework, it was statically stabilized, its frescoes were conserved, and it opened its gates anew to worshippers and visitors. The former Acropole Hotel in the heart of Athens is a typical example of French Art Nouveau in Greece. Built in the late 1920s, the hotel enjoyed glorious days until the 1980s when it suffered considerable damage and was gradually abandoned. Thanks to substantial funding from the National Strategic Reference Framework, an extensive restoration and conservation project is currently underway. Soon, the Acropole Hotel known for its ornate decoration, shall become a new and important open cultural venue for inhabitants and visitors. Thanks to funding from the third community support framework, the operational program Culture, as well as the National Strategic Reference Framework, the National Museum of Modern Art finds a permanent home in the facilities of the former Fix Brewery. Fully restored, the well-known industrial building is transformed into a major cultural venue, harmoniously incorporated into urban life. An area of 20,000 square meters includes exhibition spaces, 
offices, an auditorium, archives, a library, workshops, a museum shop, a cafeteria and a restaurant. The new museum shall open its gates to the public after the completion of the exhibition program that is currently underway, with the aim to upgrade the city's cultural imprint and offer quality services to locals and visitors. The Byzantine and Christian Museum of Athens, one of the top institutions of its kind, houses one of the largest collections of Byzantine and post-Byzantine art in the world. Thanks to funding from the second and third community support frameworks, the museum, originally housed in the palace of the Duchess of Placentia, which was also renovated, acquired new buildings to accommodate its valuable collections. Turning community funding to its full advantage, the museum currently manages all its operations digitally. From the documentation of artefacts, to the design of virtual exhibitions and guiding services offered to visitors via the internet and mobile devices. Work in the museum's surroundings has transformed the area into a cultural garden that shall host permanent and periodical exhibitions. Nearly completed, the museum becomes an accessible and appealing educational and entertainment destination for everyone. Nowadays, thanks to funding from the National Strategic Reference Framework 2007 to 2013 and the Regional Operation Programme of Attica, a great commemorative exhibition is being designed as part of the 2014 year of El Greco. The exhibition a major event marking the 400-year anniversary of the great painter's death sheds light on his work and sets off Crete's social and artistic milieu in the 16th century. Just a few kilometers away from the center of Athens, the Monastery of Daphne is one of the most important and interesting Byzantine monuments in Greece. Inscribed on UNESCO's World Heritage List, the monumental complex dates from the 11th to the 19th century, incorporating architectural elements of Greek antiquity. Funding from the Third Community Support Framework and the National Strategic Reference Framework permitted the consolidation and reinforcement of the Catholic masonry, heavily damaged by the 1999 earthquake, which is nearly complete. Extensive conservation of the unique mosaics of the dome and arches is still being carried out, as is the case with the propping up of the great precinct wall, in order to present a fully restored monument to the public. Castoria was an important center of Byzantine civilization in northern Greece. The famous Castoria mansions, as well as the Byzantine monuments scattered throughout the city and decorated with hundreds of frescoes, attract visitors from all over the world. Funding from the National Strategic Reference Framework permitted the restoration of the most important churches, such as those of St. Nicholas Totsa, the Holy Apostles, the Virgin Eleusa, and the Virgin of the Saints Anahiri, as well as several unique mansions. Moreover, screens, frescoes and portable icons from several churches, fine samples of the Castoria school were conserved and shall soon be exhibited in the city's Byzantine Museum, which was fully renovated thanks to funding from the National Strategic Reference Framework. The Bayezid Mosque in Didimotijo is one of the most important Ottoman monuments in Europe. Its wooden roof impresses with its technique and aesthetics, just like the rest of the building. An excellent sample of Ottoman architecture, 
an indispensable part of Greece's history. Work conducted as part of the National Strategic Reference Framework includes the covering of the mosque roof with sheets of lead, the conservation of the minaret and extensive restoration work in order to make the mosque accessible to the public. The Bayezid Mosque, along with the Church of St. Athanasios and the Byzantine Museum, are parts of a trilogy of works granted by the Ministry of Culture and Sports to the city of Didimotiho. Their completion marks a great cultural investment and constitutes a major growth asset for the city and the region. In Messini, excavations conducted over the last 30 years have brought to light one of the most important ancient cities in terms of size, layout and state of preservation. A city with impressive fortifications, temples and civic buildings, which also enjoys the rare privilege of occupying a natural expanse free of subsequent habitation. Work completed within the third community support framework yielded a series of restored monuments at the site. Planning for the current programming period includes consolidation of edifices and masonry, the reconstruction of the gymnasium and agora colonnades, as well as key interventions for the promotion of the site in its entirety. In the area of Chora, Messinia, a new protective shelter for the Mycenaean Palace of Nestor is constructed thanks to funding provided by the National Strategic Reference Framework. The shelter, along with landscaping and work towards the promotion of the site, provides the public with a major monument, a unique vestige of the mighty Mycenaean world that links us with the world of Homer. The Kalamata International Dance Festival carved for the city of Kalamata a distinct place in the realm of international cultural events, granting it new development opportunities. The construction of the Kalamata Dance Hall was funded from the second and third community support framework and the National Strategic Reference Program with the aim to further support the festival and boost the city's cultural potential. This modern and functional building was designed to host dance, theatrical and opera performances, as well as to serve as a conference venue. On the mountain range of Taigatos, the medieval city of Mistra developed from the mid-13th century into one of the most important fortified civic centres of its time maintaining close political and cultural ties with Constantinople. The large number of surviving buildings, the triple fortification, the urban plan with small houses and mansions, churches and monasteries, streets, the metropolitan complex and the palace necessitated the preservation and promotion of this unique heritage site. As part of the Third Community Support Framework and the National Strategic Reference Framework, restoration and consolidation work was carried out on select buildings, such as the Palace Complex. Efforts were also directed to landscaping and improving services offered to visitors. Thanks to those interventions, the site of Mistra, inscribed on UNESCO's World Heritage List in 1989, becomes more attractive for the general public, attracts an increased number of visitors and enhances its role in the region's development.
the archaeological site of Epidavros, inscribed on UNESCO's World Heritage List since 1988, is famous all over the world for its ancient theatre. A work of Polykletos dating to the 4th century BC, the theatre of Epidavros constitutes the greatest ancient Greek theatre in terms of acoustics and aesthetics. It is here that ancient Greek drama was revived, hosting numerous performances over the course of 60 years. In addition to the glorious theatre, in ancient times Epidavros also housed one of the most important Asclepia of the ancient world. Thanks to funding from the Third Community Support Framework and the National Strategic Reference Framework, an extensive project of reconstruction, restoration, promotion and consolidation is carried out, including most monuments at the site. It goes without saying that the small theatre in the area of the ancient city of Epidavros also enjoys the care of the Ministry of Culture and Sports. Thanks to the full exploitation of community funding opportunities, the small theatre is restored in order to host quality musical and theatrical events in line with the area's significant cultural tradition. In the Thessalian Domini, a site identified with the Homeric Iolkos, Jason's starting point for the Argonaut expedition, numerous significant finds came to light, enhancing our knowledge of the Mycenaean period. Sanctuaries and Tholos tombs make up a Mycenaean settlement inhabited continuously to the second century AD. Funds from the National Strategic Reference Framework were aptly used for the promotion of the palatial complex and the construction of permanent shelters that protect the ancient monuments and improve the visitor's experience while at the site. For centuries, the ancient theatre of Larissa in the heart of the modern city hosted theatrical performances as well as the meetings of the first confederation of the Thessalian city-states. Extensive work carried out at the ancient theatre, the outcome of year-long interdisciplinary research and collaboration, includes conservation and restoration of all its parts, cleaning of the marble and porous surfaces, as well as interventions aiming at the theatre's aesthetic improvement. Thus, the city of Larissa acquires a valuable source of regional development. In Varia, Mytilene, the house of Stratus Eleftheriadis, known in the Parisian artistic circles as Teriad, offered hospitality to many great European artists and intellectuals after the war. An art lover and a known publisher of art books, Teriad prompted great painters of the modern European school, such as Chagall, Matisse and Picasso to create series of drawings used to illustrate the peculiar books that he printed himself, now exhibited in the museum. The building and the foundation's important collection have long attracted the interest of both the general public and experts, yet they were sadly deteriorating. Funding from the National Strategic Reference Framework was used to carry out all necessary repairs and erect a new building that will house the museum's supporting operations. The new exhibition offers visitors a truly unique experience. Thanks to the Teriad Museum, the island of Lesvos acquires a unique attraction for Greek and international visitors. New job opportunities support the local economy, whereas new facilities are sure to meet the needs of an increasing number of visitors. At the northeastern end of the city of Mytilene, the castle occupies the highest point of the island. One of the largest castles in the Mediterranean, it constitutes a great example of defence architecture. 
The monument's integration into the Third Community Support Framework and the National Strategic Reference Framework permitted its restoration in several places, such as the vaults, the South Wall, the Teke, and the Ottoman Bath, as well as the reconstruction and promotion of buildings of the 19th and 20th centuries. The fortified complex and its individual monuments are protected and incorporated into the city's daily life through educational activities and cultural events that improve the quality of life and contribute to local tourism. The medieval city of Rhodes, an extensive monument with excellently preserved examples of fortifications, civic buildings and religious edifices, is protected and constantly supported with new reconstruction work and projects showcasing its architectural treasures. Restoration and reconstruction work began in the course of the second and third community support framework and continue within the realms of the National Strategic Reference Framework in the Hostel of the Knights of Spain the Hostel of the Knights and the Recep Pasha Mosque. At the same time, work at the bastions and the roof of the Palace of the Grand Master of Knights has improved the monument's static strength and restored its original form. Restorative work aiming to promote the medieval city focused on the moles of the medieval harbour, improving access to the site and contributing greatly to its understanding. The local economy is systematically boosted with the creation of new jobs, both in the said projects and in tourism. Sacred Delos, a dot of land amidst the Aegean, the most lucid spot of the archipelago, housed for centuries the cult of Apollo, twin brother of Artemis. Their mother, Lito, found refuge on the island to give birth to her children, the fruit of her love with Zeus. Delos was not only the site where the Mediterranean peoples coexisted peacefully, but also a major center for the transport of goods and ideas. Today, Delos enjoys the unique privilege of being a unified archaeological site without later elements or interventions. Thanks to funding from the Third Community Support Framework and the National Strategic Reference Framework, consolidation work was carried out on select buildings, portable finds and frescoes were conserved, while the route of visitors in the theatre quarter was designed anew in order to improve their on-site experience. At the charming site of the Vivoni Oracle, incorporated on UNESCO's World Heritage List, the theatre operated for over four centuries without interruption. Exploiting funding from the Third Community Support Framework and the National Strategic Reference Framework, the Ministry of Culture and Sports systematically restores the monument. Work includes the consolidation and restoration of the Kilon, the lower diazoma and the staircases leading up. Cleaning work and landscaping showcases the theatre and the remaining monuments of the sanctuary in their entirety. The site of Nicopolis constitutes one of the largest ancient Greek cities. Built on the peninsula separating the Ambracian Gulf from the Ionian Sea, Nicopolis was founded by Octavian August as a centre of Roman control over Western Greece, as well as a memento of the victory of the Ptomalaic fleet of Cleopatra and Antony, which marked the end of the Roman civil strife. The city was adorned with imposing buildings and became famous throughout the empire for the magnificent spoils amassed there. 
thanks to funding from the Third Community Support Framework and the National Strategic Reference Framework, the restoration and promotion of the Roman and early Christian monuments continued, with the aim to preserve the site from the marks of time and showcase it to visitors. The fortifications are restored and work at the Roman Odeon is completed, turning it into an accessible monument and a venue for cultural events. The Heraklion Archaeological Museum, one of the most important in Greece and Europe, is considered as the Museum of Minoan Culture par excellence worldwide. Its finds cover all periods of Cretan history, from the Neolithic to the Roman times, yet the remains of the Minoan palatial period stand out among them. Funding from the Third Community Support Framework permitted the expansion of the museum, which actually doubled its spaces. Additionally, funding from the National Strategic Reference Framework permitted the re-exhibition of the museum's collection, deemed necessary for the promotion and protection of cultural heritage. Approximately 2,000 exhibits were conserved and consolidated, while supplementary work was carried out in the museum halls, preparing them to receive new cases. Concomitantly, the monumental complex of the Roman Catholic Monastery of St. Francis outside the museum was showcased and the operation of a recreation area for visitors was restored. The implementation of the project contributed greatly to tourism and the local economy and provided valuable know-how regarding the design and successful implementation of large-scale exhibitions. Knossos, one of the most magnificent cities of Greek antiquity, strategically located and loaded with natural advantages, is the most important example of Minoan civilization and one of the most popular sites in Greece. Thanks to funding from the Third Community Support Framework and the National Strategic Reference Framework, extensive conservation, consolidation and promotion work was carried out on the buildings of the site, as well as on nearby monuments. In the palace, an extensive conservation project included the ancient masonry as well as Evans's reconstruction, an indispensable part of the monument's history, as it has long restored the original image of the palace. Work continued at the West Magazines complex, the palace's main storage center, the Grand Staircase, one of the masterpieces of Minoan architecture, as well as the Minoan Hostel, or Caravan Sarai a building complex with habitation quarters, storage areas and bath facilities. All aforementioned areas became accessible to the public and were unified via a course of great natural beauty with improved accessibility. The participation of skilled personnel of all specialties and works at the site and the expertise acquired constitute an important consignment for the implementation of analogous projects in the future. Spinologa, a small fortified islet in Crete, is one of the most peculiar monuments of Greece. In medieval times it was masterfully fortified by the Venetians, and in the 18th and 19th centuries it flourished greatly. Nevertheless, the last usage of the area as a leper colony made Spinologa synonymous with suffering. Today, Spinologa, located in an area with great tourist appeal, has become a popular archaeological site that attracts large numbers of international visitors.
Cleaning, consolidation and restoration works began in 1997 and still go on, thanks to funding from the Third Community Support Framework and the National Strategic Reference Framework. Minor reconstruction is carried out with the aim of maintaining the originality of the area and promote its complex physiognomy. Day after day, hundreds of thousands of visitors to Spinologa have the opportunity to safely tour an emotionally charged archaeological and historical site and discover its complexity and secrets. Delphi, one of the most imposing sites of Greece, was, according to the ancient Greeks, the Omphalos of the Earth. The famous ancient oracle in the sanctuary of Apollo operated uninterruptedly for hundreds of years, giving Greeks its peculiar oracles from the Archaic period to the time of Julian. Extensive works of preservation, conservation and promotion carried out as part of the National Strategic Reference Framework in the sanctuaries of Apollo and Athena Pronaea, the Gymnasium, Castalia Spring and the Roman Agora improved the overall appearance of the site. Of key importance for the site's protection was the installation of a system of fire extinguishing and fire protection, implemented thanks to co-financed programs. A series of interventions, such as the maintenance of the enclosure, the replacement of the entrance gates to the site and the museum, and the replacement of the shelter at the ticket booth, improved the access of visitors and enhanced the services offered to them. Extensive cleaning and deforestation changed the appearance of the site and concomitantly created the conditions for the conservation of the monuments. Ancient Olympia, the cradle of the Olympic Games, an emblematic site with a great symbolic value, occupies a special place in the heart of a broad international audience. The lighting of the Olympic flame, the unique archaeological site and the rare treasures of the museum attract thousands of visitors every year. In Olympia, work for the improvement and promotion of the site and museums is continuous thanks to funding from the Third Community Support Framework and the National Strategic Reference Framework. Nowadays, the eastern stoa of the gymnasium is exposed and showcased. Propping up the sanctuary of Demeter Kamini and the Cronion Hill, as well as the construction of a new entrance to the site, facilitate the visitor's course within the site and improve the understanding of the monuments. The site of Vergina brought to light the most important finds regarding the life and history of the ancient Macedonians. It is here that Alexander the Great spent his childhood and early years, here that Aristotle and many other important Greek philosophers of the time taught. It is here that Evropidis and other famous playwrights of ancient Greece staged their plays. In 1996, UNESCO inscribed the site of Ehye on its World Heritage List. Extensive work funded from the Third Community Support Framework and the National Strategic Reference Framework includes the conservation of a great part of the palace, as well as the promotion of the Royal Necropolis and the Cemetery of the Timonids. A large proportion of funding is allocated to the construction, furnishing and exhibitions of the Polycentric Museum of Vergina, which will present the personality and historical imprint of the Macedonian kings in a contemporary fashion with the aid of various media. At the same time, 
the implementation of the virtual museum for Alexander the Great contributes to the enhanced promotion of the history of ancient Macedonia with the effective use and efficient integration of information technology and communications. Corfu is located at a key spot of the Mediterranean, between Western Europe and the Eastern Mediterranean. Its fort, constructed originally by Byzantine and later on by Venetian architects, is one of the city's most characteristic and recognizable landmarks. The restoration of the defense wall in many places, along with low-key promotion work, reinforced the monument and improved accessibility, security and viewing conditions for thousands of visitors to the island. Between the years 2000 and 2014, the Ministry of Culture and Sports, exploiting funding opportunities stemming from the Third Community Support Framework and the National Strategic Reference Framework to the fullest, designed and implemented a series of important and multifaceted projects for Greece's monuments and archaeological sites. Concomitantly, it established new museums, improved existing museum facilities and implemented new exhibitions adapted to the educational and entertainment needs of the contemporary visitor. Protection, conservation and restoration projects preserve Greece's cultural heritage, creating invaluable symbolic and economic assets. Offering a great number of scholars and specialized craftsmen the opportunity to occupy themselves with the protection of monuments and the improvement of museum facilities, such projects enhance scholarly knowledge and expertise, while creating thousands of new jobs, both during the implementation of the actual projects and during the operation of the finished works. Strategic decisions and solid work in the realm of promotion have broken new ground for the reinforcement of side activities that afford sustainable development, strengthen local communities and boost the local economy. Combining the opportunities offered by co-funded programs with a coherent national framework for the promotion of Greek cultural heritage, the Ministry of Culture and Sports cultivates the cultural values in Greece and Europe, contributing decisively to the shaping of a unified European cultural and development policy. <laughs>